Level by Level Gaming here, and this is going to be another PAPK3 Plus video. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to correct the problems that I was having in my previous video with my D menu. So, the first thing here is we want to make sure that our device is connected. So, for me, it's F and G. This would be my internal card, and this would be my external card. So, the reason I want to have that pulled up is just so I can show you that under the original file system here and under game is where all of the ROMs are stored and for me it's easy visually to be able to see what these are called CPS, FC, GB and just remembering what they stand for so um, just have that in the back of your mind because you're going to want to know the names of these you're also going to look on your external card here and this is where we extracted our new D menu file and our apps and emulators now on here what I did is I created a new um, folder and I just named it ROMs um, we're not going to need to create a new one but I'm just showing you what I did I created a new folder and uh, named it ROMs and under there I created more folders uh, just to store the ROMs and have them on an external card so my CPS here FC or Famcom all these are on here just like they are on my internal card now I did create some new ones um, and that's just kind of getting ahead of myself uh, in this video I'm not really going to cover some of this other stuff but we're just going to cover these core files here so you are going to have to create whatever folders you want to create on your external card and we'll get into that here in just a second now we know where uh, each one of these files are our ROMs and our game file here what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your external card where your D menu is here. You're going to want to find themes and you're going to want to find IPEN English or IPEN English. And this is the configuration file, the theme file .cfg. Now this is what you're going to want to alter to get your D menu to work. You're going to have to change how it's hard coded. Um, I'm not going to mess with mine because mine is been corrected and it works and I'm not going to fiddle around with this one but what I am going to do is I'm going to go here and for demonstration purposes I'm going to uh, I extracted the D menu onto its own file just as if it was on my internal here and I'm going to use that for a demonstration so once again you're going to go in you're going to find themes and you're going to find your IPEN English here and now this is one that I can play around with because it is the original the way it came it's not on my system and it's not going to affect anything so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull it up I have mine pulled up in WordPad uh, that's just because WordPad seems to work better for me uh, you can open it up in notepad if you did open it up let me just show you if you open it up in notepad it's going to look like this it's all garbled uh, can't really read it like you read a book so it just makes it hard um, I open this thing up with wordpad and it works just fine and now I can read it line for line and it makes sense so under this config file here you're going to go down to where you see your emulators now this is your stock emulators and that's what the focus of this video is going to be is your stock emulators and um, you see here that under CPS1 if you remember it would go to a file system and you would have to go through a couple processes you would have to go to the mount folder the memory folder game folder and CPS folder to get your games to work um, if you've watched the previous video so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out why it doesn't do what it needs to do automatically and that's because this selector directory here is hard-coded to go 
not to CPS, but it's go it's hard coded to go to CPS one. Um, and but on our internal card, it's game CPS. There is no one here. In fact, if you added a one here, your stock menu wouldn't even register your games because it wouldn't know where to look. So that is the problem is it has it's looking in the wrong spot so to fix that we're going to get rid of this um let me hit delete here backspace something there we go we're going to get rid of the cps1 and just make it cps now it's looking in the right spot it's going from mount to memory to game to CPS so that is exactly how this internal card is set up mount memory game CPS so you have just changed the config file to look in the right spot so what you would have to do is go through each one of these now we got CPS 2 it's looking for a CPS 2 file which doesn't exist change that to CPS it's fixed now, Neo Geo, if you remember, it worked because it came hard-coded looking in the right spot. Mount, memory, game, Neo Geo. Game Boy Advance did not work. And if you go to the selectory or selector directory here, it's pointing at Mount Archive Temp gba that does not exist so what we're going to want to do is if you want it to point to your internal card i'm just using that as an example you're going to have to change this to memory game now it is already set to gba so mount memory game GBA now instead of getting a blank screen blank lines nothing showing up at all it has been fixed it will point to where it needs to be and you will see your games problem solved the SFC uh, the Super Nintendo the Mega Drive they still crash on exit but if you notice they are automatically set to go to your internal drive and to the right folder um, something I did want to cover also is if you noticed under GBA it actually has a previews uh, command line here and I don't know how previews work and I'll just save that for another video but it does have previews and it is also set to be that mount archive temp uh, previews it changed that game or GBA it was different on the end but this was how this was originally set up so I'm not going to mess around with previews right now but in the future I will be doing a video on how to set up previews for your games so you can see like a little picture or something like that I believe that's how that works anyway moving on you have to go through each line and make sure that it is set up how you want it now what if you want your external card to be where it looks so I've shown you how to point it towards the internal card if you want it on the external card if you notice here I have my apps which I extracted on here D menu was extracted emulator and I went in here and I created a new um, where is it at here new a new folder and I named it ROMs it's not going to let me do it because I already have one as set up as ROMs, but I named it ROMs, and uh, under that, let's get that out of here, under that, I created more, and I have my CPS games, and here you go. These are my uh, ROMs. I'm just using that as an example. also wrote some new ones, um, links. 3d game but that's just me getting ahead of myself previews so we're not going to worry about that this is as long as you have your core files here your cps fc gb gba and here there's a little more flexibility because you can name these whatever you want but let's say you wanted your emulator to point to your external card to your cps so what you'd have to do here 
is you would go back and instead of it being pointed towards where's it at? CPS1 instead of it being pointed towards mount memory game CPS on my external card it's going to be mount MMC this would not be games it'd be ROMs and then CPS because that's what the file the next file in this sequence would be and now I've made my CPS one point towards my external card and not my internal card so once you go through and you type it all out and you go line for line and you get it customized and pointed to where you want it to be you're going to want to go up here um, something that I do is I just save as because I don't want to go over the original just in case I mess something up or I really uh, wasn't paying attention and I type something out I always like to have a copy of an original so what I would do is I would just save it as wherever desktop or um, you know kick a copy of this thing out that is not copying over your original that's just my way of doing things um, if you really wanted to you could just hit save and it would save over that original file on your external card and you would already be good to go but like I said I just don't like erasing originals just in case I mess something up um, once I did that if you notice out here on my desktop this is the one that I've can reconfigured I've retyped here and changed these things to where that I want them to be so once you get your new theme here retyped uh, you do want to save it over your internal card here under your D menu under your themes you're going to want to save it over top or delete this one and replace this one with the new one so if you look at mine this is the way I have mine set up this is the actual one that I'm running and I went line for line here and I've changed it I have all my stock emulators uh, for demonstration purposes and it'll probably be the way that I run it uh, I have my stock emulators all pointing to my internal memory systems here to the way that it is automatically set up and I did that for every one of my stock emulators I just made sure that it was pointed to that internal memory card on my external memory card or my alternative alternative emulators I have everything pointed to that like I said that external memory card MMC ROMs um, CPS Neo Geo GBA I've got it all set up to point to that external source and um, what I will do is I will take and make available at the bottom in the description of this video I will take a copy of my altered theme here I'll make it available for download and that way if you want to set your system up to the exact same way that I have mine here um, these would all be original you wouldn't have to do much here uh, but if you set up your external card the way that I have mine uh, ROMs and then you have these sub files set up this way that theme will work for you now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to cutting the device on and showing you that the new D menu works so please stay tuned okay let's finish up this video as you can see we are back into our D menu here and if you remember under emulators here was where I was showing some of these problems and if you went to CPS 1 it wouldn't go to your ROMs it would go to that file system so as you can see by changing that theme and fixing the lines and getting it to point in the right direction we do have a working CPS 1 and working CPS 2 it is showing the ROMs and it is pointed exactly where it needs to be and you don't have to go through any special steps it's right there if you remember uh, Neo Geo worked already but GBA was just blank now we have all of our ROMs success it is pointing in the right direction and it works just as it should so there you have it uh, we have proof that this fixed that config 
file to where it is pointing to where it needs to go and all these are working um, like I said these are the ones the Super Famicom Mega Drive the Famicom those are the ones that crash on exit I don't have that figured out yet that'll come later if I get a solution for that I will make a video um, the alternative emulators here they are pointed to where they need to be but there are specific things that come along with these that is different than um, than these original emulators and I will save alternative emulators for another day. So if this has helped you fix your config file to where your DMNU works, thank you for watching and please like, follow, and subscribe.